More on the inconsistencies and the possible consequences of the administration's policy towards Iran. Let's turn now to a Pentagon veteran from the Reagan administration, former Assistant Secretary of Defense Lawrence Korb, now a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. Thanks once again for some of your time tonight, sir. My pleasure. This key finding of the Hirsch article that the administration is secretly funding the Sunni jihadists with the links to Al Qaeda. Firstly, is the reporting valid? And secondly, if so, does that not have Iran Contra the sequel stamped all over it? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that they're so concerned about Iran and the influence of the Shias in that part of the world that they're doing what they can to offset it. And there's very little doubt that they're giving money to uh, governments uh, like the government of Lebanon. And as we know from what happened in Iraq, once you start giving money, you can't control where it ends up. And so what's happened is they're turning a blind eye to some of the Sunni groups that are associated with our friends in there and the government of Lebanon in the government of Saudi Arabia. What is what is next to try to find out what's happened here? I mean, do we have to have congressional investigations into this? It would seem to be so um, counter everything that's been done in this country for the last five years to be even in the same large photograph with people who have links to Al-Qaeda, on uh, theoret theoretically on our side. Well, <clears throat> what you need to have, see, when the Republicans control the Senate Intelligence Committee and all the committees, there's very little oversight. Now that the Democrats are in charge, Senator Rockefeller, they're going to demand hearings on this to find out where the money went, under what auspices it went, and whether, in fact, this should have been reported uh, to the committees. I mean, <clears throat> you're not allowed to just transfer money around willy-nilly without letting the uh, the intelligence committees know what, you, what, you, what you're up to. And from what I understand and what Cy Hirsch's article seems to imply, it's not done through the CIA, which would require a specific presidential finding, but controlled out of the National Security Council and maybe the vice president's office, which becomes uh, different. Uh, and that, of course, as you pointed out, is how the whole Iran-Contra thing got going, because the money the operation was controlled by the, the White House, and the profits on the arms sales were used to fund uh, the war in Nicaragua, which Congress had uh, cut off funds for. If, and I guess this is the question that people are, would be asking, trying to digest all this simultaneously. If the Sunnis are not the enemy, and the Shiites are not the enemy, and most importantly, the Al-Qaeda-linked jihadists are not the enemy, who is it that we're opposed to in the Middle East, and what is this country's policy towards the Middle East right now? Well, <clears throat> what you should have as a policy, you should try and have stability in the Middle East, which of course we upset by going into Iraq without a plan to deal with the aftermath of the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. We never did a cost-benefit analysis of what would happen once we went in and got rid of Saddam Hussein. The, the Saudis had told us, look, you're going to solve one problem, you're going to create five others, which is what, uh, what we've done. We've empowered Iran because Iraq was the main enemy of Iran. In fact, for the longest time, we aided Saddam Hussein to prevent the expansion of Iranian influence. Uh, we also eliminated Iran's other enemy, the Taliban, in Afghanistan. And in 2003, when after the Iranians had worked with us in Afghanistan to get rid of the, uh, the Taliban, they offered to sit down and talk to us about who would do what in the region. We refused to do it. We were kind of feeling our oats then, and, and we didn't want to negotiate with what we considered a, a rogue, rogue regime, so we didn't do it. Now here we are, you know, almost four years later, and we said, well, we don't want to negotiate with the Iranians because we would be in a position of weakness. Uh, uh, and even Henry Kissinger f said today, you know, you can't just have a military surge. You need a diplomatic surge, and we really need to get all of the countries in the region involved or this thing's going to spin out of control. Wrong ally, wrong place, wrong time, and it seems to be consistent all the way through. Larry Korb, former Assistant Defense Secretary, now with the Center for American Progress. Thank you again, sir. Thanks for having me. I had Secretary of State Rice. It's the